If you don't like using tools to cut down your own wood, Home Depot will cut the pieces down for you. Especially if you craft a lot and resell, there are some really good bargains to find on unfinished pieces of wood. This can be really budget friendly instead of buying them by the piece already cut up at Dollar Tree. Me, however, I like cutting down my own wood. I grabbed this large dowel at Home Depot for around $10. I cut it up into three small random size pieces. I didn't really measure this. I kind of won the sizes. For this rustic candlestick holder, you can take this idea and remix it however you want. We are going to need a spade bit to drill the holes for each one of these pieces. If you wanted to create tea light holes, you could take this idea and use a different spade bit to get that effect. This one I knew was going to be the perfect size to put our candlesticks in. And I took my time making sure with each hole that they fit in there nice and snugly. Now keep in mind, I wasn't going for perfection with these holes. They are messy, but these are meant to be rustic. For the stain, I'm gonna be using my favorite stain, which is Antique Waverly Wax. I absolutely love the fact that it does not have a smell and it's really easy to use and spread around, especially if you spritz a little bit of water onto it and use a baby wipe, it can really spread out nicely and it gives you a good bang for your buck to keep extra product in the bottle instead of on your project. And please keep in mind, this little spritzing water hack is not going to be the best idea for all stains. Be mindful of mixing water with oil. Another little hack I wanna share with you to cut down time on those rough edges of your wood is to use a paintbrush instead of a sponge or a wipe. It can be really tedious getting in those rough edges if you didn't sand the ends down. And you'll notice here that the end is really dark that's because I'm having to use a lot of product. If you take your water bottle and spritz those rough edges, it seeps in, allowing for your product to spread out more evenly. So you also won't have a darker tone on the edges and you're using less product as you go. Once your candlestick holders are dry or your wood projects are dry, you're free to seal it up however you want. I wanted these rustic, so I decided to leave it alone. And I also wanna attach them. So I'm grabbing my favorite wood glue, which is this tight bond wood glue. I recently had somebody told me I needed to get the quick dry stuff. So I'm gonna be investing in that joint. I'm using a little bit of hot glue to get us an immediate hold. That wood glue is gonna give us that long lasting hold. And I just put these together gently, making sure that I attach them in the right spots. You could absolutely use a little twine, wrap them around, give them a little bit of a nautical feel, but I was completely happy with these nice and plain, just like this. This wood sunflower piece I picked up from Five Below and thought would be perfect for the top of a tray. And not just any tray, an interchangeable tray that we can use either as a candle holder or a pedestal tray. So first off, let's cut them strings off of there because we're not gonna need them. And I absolutely love how large this piece is and the design. We're gonna need to fill up those holes. You can use some spackling. I happen to have this texture paste sitting right next to me. And if you use two layers of this, it does a really good job filling in holes. I don't recommend it. It is not the most budget friendly option, but I did not have any spackling sitting near me. So we're winging, filling in the holes, my friends. And I did this to both sides because the holes were fairly deep and I didn't wanna waste too much product. Once they were completely dry, I grabbed my ink chalk, which is from Waverly. I get this from Walmart. It's really inexpensive. And I took a little bit of water to also save on wasting any excess paint that I didn't need to for the project and painted this one here. It literally took me one coat on both sides. And for anyone asking, Brandy, why did you pick the sunflower? Because people check this out. The dents that were put in this wood piece are popping through the beautiful black matte paint and they're gonna show through on the top of this tray. I bet you're never gonna look at a piece of wood that has this burn design of any kind on it the same way again. How pretty is that? And it honestly, the video doesn't do it justice. Now, why black, why matte? Because I have this gorgeous 
candle pillar that I have been holding onto for quite some time. Now I'm not gonna ruin it and glue the top of it. Oh no, we're, we're not gonna shove glue on the top of this baby. It is too pretty to just create for one thing. And I mean, look how awesome it is with just a candle sitting on top of it. We don't wanna do that. Instead, we're gonna grab these little sticky bits, okay? You can pick these up off Amazon. They have them at Dollar Tree, Walmart, and we're gonna just plop a couple right on the top. This is going to make it so we can switch out the top of this candle holder. Now, I also wouldn't recommend doing this hack with just any type of candle holder. Make sure it's sturdy. This sucker is wood. I know it's gonna hold any type of weight that I'm putting on here, I'm confident in it. Wouldn't get no flimsy joint and try this hack, putting a dry on top of it, especially if you're gonna apply weight to it. Make sure you put enough sticky bits on here to counter that. I'm gonna show you right here how once we apply the top of this one here, and you'll notice if you go to Five Below and you pick up one of these little wood pieces, they're not really light. They got some weight. So I'm shaking it here so you can see the adhesive is holding on to it really well. And the best part is it's removable. So you can take this idea, take whatever wood pieces that you find that are large, have beautiful designs on them, paint them to match old decor, new decor, candle holder pieces that you have in your home and make gorgeous designs that match your decor. My absolute favorite wood to DIY with is live edge wood. I like to cut the pieces down to size. I do buy them larger from a vendor where I'm also a vendor at a local art market and create beautiful decor with them. Now you can go to Home Depot and get larger pieces that they have in a pre-cut section. They might not be live edge wood, but they have different sizes and different price points for you to be able to get very similar looks with the sizes if you ever see me use these. I'd probably say this is about a one by six. For our little tray, we're gonna need some handles. And I always check out Lowe's and Home Depot for these joints. You never know where you can find them on sale. And I usually get them for like 79, 89 or 99 cents. They're great to have in your stash, especially if you do reselling. And people, we're not gonna just leave the tray like this. So we're not gonna attach the handles right away. Instead, we're gonna kind of eyeball it and then grab some transfers. This is my box of Dollar Tree at transfers. <laughs> I can feel you judging me. Just stop. I know there's probably like $50 at minimum <laughs> worth of transfers in this box. But after going through them, I got to thinking, and then I decided I'm gonna use my TDS rub on transfers instead. I really wanted to create a design right down the center of this and have it look extremely natural. So I took a couple minutes cutting out a bunch of different designs from this piece. I wasn't exactly sure what I was going for, but I knew I also wanted to have a cute little phrase down in the corner. So if you're setting it in the bathroom or in the kitchen somewhere, it just had a really nice little spot on there with the same. When I was happy with all the pieces, I then took some painter's tape and sectioned off where I planned on creating the strip down the center of our little tray. Then I grabbed the handles back and kind of repositioned them to get a feel of where they were going to be. So this way the transfers didn't interfere with anything and we didn't lose part of the design underneath one of them. So I took some time also cutting out sections of the painter's tape where the designs I cut from the transfer possibly would overlap and we wouldn't have any sticking. And using the painter's tape is a really good hack for you to be able to create a design inside of something when you're using transfers to fill it up and not lose your original shape and or have pencil marks or chalk marks all over everything that you have to go back and erase and possibly leave those marks 
on your wood. And if you're watching this wondering where you can get these beautiful transfers, they can be found at thediystruggle.com. They are my personal TDS creative brand rub on transfers. The link is down in the description box. Just click that more button. It will open it up and you'll be able to find them right below this video. With that being said, please keep in mind, you do not have to use these same exact transfers. Take the idea and remix it in what works best for you. This idea would absolutely look beautiful with any type of transfers that you feel would match your home decor. When I was happy with the placement, I just started peeling everything completely off. And I felt like these did need a little bit more of a design to kind of create that line down the center. And I just added some polka dots to give it that effect. I did decide to seal over this with some matte Mod Podge. Feel free to seal over this with whatever you feel is best for you. And for staging purposes, I just gently put the handles back on the piece. I do not like to attach handles and pieces until my things are completely dry or I'm fully happy with the seals. So I will be doing that at another time. But for staging purposes, I thought this was absolutely beautiful and the idea came across perfectly. So you at home can get some inspiration on how you can make your own. If you want to save money creating wood tabletop decor pieces at home, grab yourself a two by four. In Home Depot's pre-cut section, they do have some cut down to about four foot in size, or you can go over to the lumber area where they have them for 10 foot at $6.34. That's a lot of tabletop decor pieces for a little over $6. For this wood DIY, I'm gonna cut down two little square-ish pieces. And no, I didn't measure them. I kind of wung the sizes to create a matching crackle set. What's cool about this idea is you can take it and make as many pieces as you want and remix the colors up to whatever holiday season or decor you have in your home. For today's demonstration, we're gonna be using these colors from DIY Paints along with Folk Arts Crackle. If you're interested in DIY paint, Sammy over at Unicorn Dust Design sells it and I do keep a link down in the description box for anyone interested. This color is absolutely stunning. And we're gonna use it as the undercoats. We're gonna paint the wood up first with this color and then allow it to dry before adding our crackle effect. This way, this is gonna be the color that we see pop through those beautiful little cracks once it takes effect. Something I always think is cool about this paint is that the color always dries lighter than what it looks like as you're applying it. There are many ways to get a crackle effect. Absolutely my favorite as of right now is the Folk Art Crackle Medium. I've used several different mediums, several different techniques. This is just consistent for me. It's inexpensive. I really like the results as well. So it's what I roll on with. You at home, use whatever makes sense for you to get your crackle effect. You can take this idea and remix it to whatever works for you. It doesn't have to be this medium. I will tell you that using a heat gun will amplify the effect. I am currently out of a heat gun, so we're just gonna be dealing with whatever effect I get naturally. I like to allow my medium to completely dry naturally without a heat gun. Using the heat gun, once you've applied your top layer, it will enhance the crackle effect of the paint over top of the medium. But we're just gonna have to allow this to take its natural course. I have had two heat guns <laughs> take a crap on me. But you can see here, this isn't even dry and the effect is already taking place. The stuff works really well. Also, 
it has an attitude people so a good hack would be to make sure that your brush is nice and saturated with as much paint as you need to make it completely across your project so this way you do not pull off the medium for whatever reason if you continue to go over the same section it will wet the medium up and pull it and you will not have crackle effects in the spots that you want them to now that we have our base done and it's dry i'm grabbing two different stencils you can use the same stencil if you want i want to use two different ones and take some of my tim holtz texture paste and mix it with a little bit of paint that is almost identical to the color underneath of the crackle. Then we're going to gingerly spread this over the stencil. I always like to tell people it is a good idea to tape down the stencils before attempting this. However, as you can see here, <laughs> size matters and it really goes over the entire project so I held it in place well enough that we didn't have a lot of moving around and then applied our texture paste and peeled it right off I love how the color is popping through the crackle and the thin layer of the white paint to match our raised stencil on here you can do so much with this idea and create so many amazing pieces i think this would look beautiful having little snowflakes in different colors like a blue and a silver or a red and a gold around christmas time such a beautiful effect feel free to seal over these with whatever works best for you i'd happily use a mod podge and put right over here or some liquid patina as always, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today and until next time.